we'll get into the next topic which is secondary lectures what is the significance of secondary lecture why do we need to go for the secondary lecture again there is no hard and fast rule saying that uh, uh, you need to go for a secondary lecture in only in one particular scenario or something like that there are various scenarios okay now i will again explain from my current client so in our current client we got 25 primary ledgers inr ledger usd ledger keep this usd ledger aside korea ledger jpy ledger singapore ledger and so on okay and uh, consolidation ledger is at a top level and our headquarters is in us okay for all these primary ledgers we got one secondary ledger for india we got inr secondary ledger so i will take say for a, for one or two countries i will take example uh, okay so for usd ledger that is my main ledger which is located in uh, us my chart of account name is say coa uh, corporate chart of account that is the name of my chart of accounts okay and uh, calendar is we are using a calendar uh, which is uh, starting from january and ending on december and my functional currency is usd okay forget about the subledger accounting method for the time being we also got a subledger accounting method which which is uh, oracle seeded subledger accounting method okay for ian again for inr primary ledger my corporate of uh, my chart of account is same my calendar is same my subledger accounting method is same my currency is inr okay so this is how exactly the structure which is looking like in our current client okay my chart of accounts of all the primary ledgers is same calendar is same currency is different subledger accounting method is different okay for each of these primary ledgers we have got one secondary ledger inr secondary ledger kry secondary ledger jpy secondary ledger and uh, hgd secondary ledger okay and my chart of accounts for india we got the same chart of account calendar is april to march and subledger accounting method is different subledger accounting method we have used inr subledger accounting method and for korea different chart of account korea chart of account calendar is same january to december and uh, okay i need to even add the functional functional currency is inr functional currency is krw and uh, krw slam for japan we were using uh, i think we were using yeah, corporate chart of account uh, calendar is same jan december jpy and we were using uh, corporate and for singapore same chart of account i think singapore the calendar was something different or it's a same okay so here you can see secondary ledger is linked to a primary ledger and for the secondary ledger you can have the same values as that i mean as far as the forces is concerned you can have the same forces as that of your primary ledger or you can have a each of those four c's can be different i mean ideally you will not have any scenario wherein all these four c's are exactly matching with your primary ledger if that is the case there is no point in going for your secondary ledger but if there is a requirement wherein any of these c's are different then you need to go for your second ledger so in this example if you can see chart of accounts is same calendar is different and subledger accounting method is different if you see in the second ledger chart of accounts is different subledger accounting method is different so if you see in this case chart of accounts is same calendar is same uh, i think this is a bad example i think here we got some other uh, 
it was some june to july or something like that i don't remember exactly yeah but the calendar is different even here something is different i think here uh, slam was different okay so you need to go for a secondary lecture wherein there is a requirement uh, wherein the local requirement is different so in our current case as i mentioned earlier we are following the same chart of accounts as part of uh, as that of your uh, corporate head office which is us we are following the same calendar we are following the same subledger accounting method as that of the uh, headquarters which is in us okay so in our current case all the users say uh, users who are located in india they are doing a data entry in the primary ledger and for each primary ledger there is a corresponding second ledger linked to that and in the second ledger the calendar is different and subledger accounting method is different so from a data entry perspective user will be entering the data in the primary ledger and then in the background there are some programs which i'll get into that uh, details in a little while uh, there are programs which are running in the background which will push the data from your primary ledger to the second ledger and they will get the data in the second ledger and from this within the second ledger based on the local rep uh, reporting requirement they massage the data or they make some changes they can do a data entry directly in the second ledger and then run the reports from the second ledger and give it to the local authorities similarly in the korea similarly in the japan and similarly in the singapore but as far as far as my corporate reporting is concerned wherein uh, i want to do a consolidation reporting is concerned i just pull the data from the translated ledger of inr ledger which is in usd translated ledger of krw translated ledger of jpy uh, jpy translated ledger of S singapore ledger and then do a consolidation into my consolidation ledger so here in our current case we got both reporting ledger as well as the secondary ledger so re reporting ledger for all these primary ledger the reporting ledger is as a reporting ledger in this case is inr ledger usd krw ledger usd that's a reporting ledger name jpy ledger usd singapore ledger usd so based on my previous discussion can you tell me like uh, how the reporting ledger gets created Uh, during exactly. yeah. whenever you run a translation when you select a target currency automatically system will create the reporting ledger or it is also called as a translated ledger you need not do any activity system will take care of creating them okay but secondary ledgers you are doing that so there is a different requirement so in this particular example i got a requirement of reporting ledger so that i can pull the data from all these reporting ledgers into my consolidation ledger and i can do reporting in us okay and as far as the second ledger is concerned i i get the data from the primary ledgers whatever is passed in the primary ledger gets into second ledger and i massage the data i do some kind of a reclassification or some kind of a groupings within the second ledger to meet my local reporting requirement and then pull the data from your my india second ledger and submit it to my indian local authorities similarly under korea jpy and the second ledger so any questions here So, so Arvind, when when you say massaging, um, yeah, at least when we talk about India ledger, so because the reporting calendar is January to December, whereas here you have to report from April to March. Um, do do you actually change the balances? Uh, I mean, YTD balances or PTD balances, and then report it. No, no, no. I mean that kind of massage, or no, no, not that kind of massage. The ma massaging I'm talking about the adjustment entry to meet the local reporting requirement. So as far as the data is concerned, April data of INR ledger will fall under April. Uh, May data of INR ledger will fall under May uh, data of uh, Indian second ledger. But from a fiscal year perspective, here Jan 17 to December 17 is called one fiscal year, and on December 17 you do a reporting. But in India, April 17 to March 18 is called one fiscal year, and you do reporting on March 18. Okay. One uh, one thing is yes, the fiscal year is different. And second thing is at the end of the year, there are a lot of kind of tax adjustment which you do in your local reporting. I'll give you an example. When you when you are doing a data entry in your uh, primary ledger, okay, there is one particular account called say GST account. Okay, you just use one particular GST account for say thousand dollars or whatever it is, but within your indian second ledger maybe there could be a reporting requirement wherein you want to split the gst into 
say gst on goods gst on services maybe gst on uh, gst on state wise something like that i'm just giving an example then what you do is you split that thousand dollars based into multiple lines so you if there is a balance of under gst account under primary ledger there's a balance of say thousand dollars okay you will break that into you will have uh, you will have you will create few more accounts like something like gst goods gst services that is one way of grouping or like one way of bifurcating the data gst of goods will be for 600 dollars gst of services is say 400 dollars or other way would be something like gst on high value goods gst on low value goods gst on high value services gst on low value services how they do what on what business on what uh, what do you call basis again that's as per the tax law you need not get into those things so what you can do is like once the data comes into your second ledger you can move the data from one account of gst account of ten thousand dollars or like one thousand dollars into gst high value goods say two hundred dollars low value goods say three hundred dollars high value services say four hundred dollars low value service hundred dollars so that means within because this is required as per your local law so local law says that don't show me a thousand dollars i want the breakup of thousand dollars so this is the breakup gst high value goods is two hundred dollars gst low value goods is three hundred dollars high value service four hundred dollars high value low value service thousand dollars so again it is matching exactly the same whatever is there in your primary ledger okay so this is called massaging of the data or regrouping of the data so this is one example there could be a lot of many other business uh, scenarios or business reason wherein you want to do some kind of an adjustment. So even on a current client, I can see that uh, there are some adjustments wherein like in primary ledger, there are some lot of code combination, something like 01, department is 00, account is a GST account and everything else is say 00. Okay. There is a balance of say $10,000. Okay. The same account code combination with the same ten thousand dollars got pushed into secondary ledger. Then what users have done is like they have actually regrouped this ten thousand dollars, broke that from department zero zero two. Sorry. From department zero zero two, department zero zero one. Department 002, we'll take one more example, say zero, uh, Department 003. And uh, $10,000 is divided to say $5,000, $3,000, and $2,000. So, from a corporate reporting perspective, the name of the Department 00 is say Department. I'm just giving an example. The name of this department is Department India. But for 001, if you get into the details, 001 is Department. India North Department India South Department India West and maybe there could be one more department Department India East and this could be uh, say maybe 1500 and 500 okay so once the data comes into second ledger under one thousand dollars what you do is you move the data data from uh, this gst account with the department of ten thousand into these accounts so the entry will be debiting all these code combinations and crediting this combination so the entry would be something like okay so this is one example of massaging the data or reclassification reclassifying the data any questions here so when a user is allowed to post on the secondary ledger uh, can they post under secondary ledger and can our data flow into a primary ledger or sorry sir come again uh, we are basically maintaining uh, primary and secondary like i'm trying to understand what is the difference between uh, uh, primary and secondary over here because secondary we have a different set of C's mm -hmm. and uh, can a user enter in secondary ledger and then we can take data in the primary ledger 
Okay, so the flow is whenever you enter the data in primary ledger, it should automatically flow, uh, flow into the secondary ledger. So that means in primary ledger, if there is an account code conversion, if there is a $10,000, you should be able to see exactly the same $10,000 in the second ledger. But you can do a reclassification. Okay, it, will, it will be automatic ledger. Yes, yes. So, but once the data comes into second ledger, you can massage the data and you can pass some extra adjustment entries within the second ledger. That will not directly go to the primary ledger. Okay, that will be sitting only in the second ledger. Okay, so generally this primary ledger and secondary ledgers will come into picture in the case of MNCs who are operating globally. So all they what they follow is all they, uh, the primary ledger should follow their uh, what you call corporate headquarters. Uh, generally accepted accounting principles and uh, uh, what you call the chart of accounts uh, and the calendar but from a local reporting requirement there could be a different reporting requirement different currency or different calendar or different sub ledger accounting method so from a local reporting perspective you can change the data or uh, or like uh, do a reclassification uh, whatever i would explain is just two examples there could be many other business reasons so that means whatever is there in primary ledger will definitely be there in second ledger if it is not there in secondary ledger if there is a balance in primary ledger not there in second ledger so that is the production support issue then you need to find out like okay why system has not pushed them into second ledger what is the reason whether data got stuck somewhere whether the program got completed in error and all those stuff so even we get some kind of a, a what you call uh, issues like wherein the data is pushed from primary to second ledger in the second ledger the general entry is not posted in primary it is posted in secondary it is not posted and user is some running some reports in the second ledger and he says that oh the data in the primary and secondary is not matching the reason is the data is got stuck in the second ledger uh, the is not posted or it got into error for some, because of some reasons or it got stuck in an interface table and so on okay okay and, uh, uh, i'm sorry go ahead yeah so arvin uh, will there be a, a scenario where if uh, let's say 100 dollars has uh, flown from primary ledger to secondary ledger mm -hmm. and during uh, massaging uh, they by mistakenly say uh, let's think about so by mistakenly they have massaged in such a way that it is not 100 but it is 110. Mm -hmm. so how do we um, match after the da the data has flown from primary to secondary okay again this is a this is a good question even he asked by our, our current client like is there any report which will show that this is my primary ledger and this is my second ledger yeah. okay and will it show that okay this is the difference unfortunately no so in our current client we have uh, we use we are using uh, something called bi tool obie tool and uh, obie team has developed one particular report because like whenever the data is being pushed from primary ledger to second ledger there is some table uh, like uh, table links like in the primary ledger table and second ledger uh, tables there are some links like if you if you look at your primary ledger journal if you go into the glje lines table there is some id and from that particular id you can trace it back to uh, the corresponding journal in the secondary lecture. I will not get into those details, but the IDs are available in the background and you can build a custom report. But unfortunately, Oracle has not built any standard report which says that this is my primary lecture balance and this is the corresponding second lecture balance. Mm, okay. okay. And we, we, we have developed that very good uh, report wherein in a single report, uh, it will show this is my primary ledger, this is my second ledger, and this is the difference. And when they see a difference, then we get into the details as to who has entered the, diff, uh, what do you call that, uh, adjusting entry, what is the reason, and all those stuff. Okay. Now. Okay. And, and just one more question, actually. So, see, uh, ideally, all the transaction uh, transactional data will flow to sec flow to secondary ledger right mm -hmm. so when transactional data is flowing to secondary ledger um yeah uh, oh okay okay uh, no got it so i mean my my question was when transactional data is flowing to secondary ledger ideally we are not bifurcating uh, this gst in the primary ledger because at that stage it's not required exactly exactly because from a okay. yes that is just one example because it, uh, the the primary ledgers are always used to from a uh, what do you call uh, from a i mean the, these are always looked at a what do you call corporate reporting perspective so in the corporate mm -hmm. reporting perspective they, are, they do not care whether gst is for goods or services or high value goods or low value goods or high value service or low value service all they need is what is my gst amount thousand dollars that's it mm, got it okay so in our current example what i have done is uh, so this is hey, Arvind, big question. Uh, mm -hmm. Arvind, 
quick question i mean when you say it will flow automatically from primary to secondary mm-hmm. uh, no background uh, request no manual intervention as okay. soon as you have a transaction in primary ledger manually entered by some user and if that the primary ledger has some secondary ledger con- uh, configuration mm-hmm. the data will flow or anything else how it goes in the background okay so it all depends on something called uh, uh, sub ledger uh, sorry secondary ledger conversion level okay there are different kind of sec- secondary ledger conversion level so from my uh, what you call training perspective i have taken a example of uh, sub ledger level there are different kinds of secondary ledger conversion level so i have gone with an example of sub ledger level conversion level okay so we'll take we'll take this as an example and i'll explain you uh, your scenario so if you do a sub ledger level conversion if you set a sub ledger level conversion between primary ledger and secondary ledger okay then there are three scenarios there are three scenarios wherein the data can be entered in the primary ledger okay one is direct gl manual entry whether it could be from a direct front end uh, screens or spreadsheet okay second option would be data coming from legacy systems into direct gl okay third scenario is data coming from sub ledgers into gl okay these are the three, three different ways through which a data can come into your primary ledger gl okay now i'm talking about the sub ledger level conversion okay this is my primary ledger let me move this aside okay this is my primary ledger and this is my secondary ledger so there is already link between a primary ledger and secondary ledger because when you are creating a secondary ledger you 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 do that creation through primary ledger so the link is already established so system understand if it is this is my primary ledger what is my secondary ledger okay so system understand that okay there is a when the data when there is a data entered in primary ledger i should push it to secondary ledger okay and what stage and how system pushes the data into secondary ledger so for the scenarios of direct gl manual entries so for the entries whatever remember i am talking from the sub ledger conversion level okay for the entries whatever is being entered in the primary ledger whether it's a manual entry or spreadsheet entry enter the data in the primary ledger and post the journal once you post the journal in primary ledger then it gets kicked into second ledger if it is an unposted journal if the journal is entered in primary ledger but is not yet posted then it will not be pushed into second ledger only once you post the journal entry in primary ledger it will be pushed into second ledger there is a reason for that the reason being as long as the journal is an unposted status it is in kind of a draft journal anybody can go and delete the journal entry in the primary ledger okay that is the reason why only once the journal entry is posted in primary ledger system will push that journal into secondary ledger because once the journal entry is posted you cannot again delete that in a journal entry in the primary ledger and you will not have a scenario of uh, seeing uh, uh, data not being synced between primary ledger and secondary ledger okay so once the journal entry is posted in primary ledger that gets pushed into your secondary ledger when you say it's posted uh, pushed into secondary ledger once it is posted in primary uh, is there any background programs involved or the system will take care of it without uh... okay. okay when you when you click on post button there is a program called program automatic posting okay or posting program which gets triggered that is the program which will check for this particular primary ledger is there any second ledger linked if it is linked it will go and create the entry in the second ledger okay, okay. okay. you need not run any other program okay that's the one thing and the second thing scenario is legacy system entries into direct gl okay there is no uh, sub ledger it directly through a legacy system you are interfacing the data into your gl okay even for the legacy system entries also you post a general entry in the primary ledger that will get pushed into second ledger okay and for the sub okay. third scenario is sub ledger entries into gl so how the data gets pushed from sub ledgers into gl you run a program called create accounting okay i mean obviously what is create accounting and all those things we'll uh, talk more about that in the, when when we get into the sub ledgers okay but for all the data entries you have done once the data entry is done in the sub ledgers you run a program called create accounting in the sub ledgers once you run your create accounting program that program will send the data from sub ledgers into gl that is the concept okay so again that particular create accounting program when you are running the program of create accounting in the sub ledger that will check 
for the primary ledger if there is any secondary ledger if there is a secondary ledger that program itself will push the data into primary and secondary okay it will send the data to primary as well as the secondary ledger so create accounting program is the program which will which is the driver or which will the, which will hit the data into primary and secondary so these are the only three scenarios are possible for the data entry in your primary ga okay so to at a high level to answer your question two programs which are pushing the data into secondary ledger, either posting program or create accounting program arvin how does it manage open and close period in this case like okay it's a good question primary ledger and second ledger are from a system perspective again it's a two separate ledgers so opening and closing of the periods are concerned you need to manually as if uh, in the second in the primary ledgers uh, if you remember we went to this uh, setup open and close click on find and click on open next period see this is for the reliance inr ledger similarly you need to do the same thing for the secondary ledger also for the second ledger there will be a different responsibility general ledger super ledger reliance inr second ledger something like that so you need to open and close this opening and closing of the process needs to happen for both primary and secondary again uh, the production support issue you have opened the period in primary ledger because generally i mean uh, uh, second ledgers are actually least bothered by the uh, the data entry users okay you open the period in primary ledger you do, you forgot to open the period in the second ledger you run your create accounting program or you run your posting program in primary ledger it will throw an error message saying that the corresponding second ledger period is not open unless and until you open the secondary ledger period system will not allow the journal to be posted even the primary ledger this is also one of the data entry uh, sorry uh, the production support issue wherein a uh, couple of months back like uh, when we started uh, using oracle uh, r12 uh, our users uh, did not uh, open the period in the second ledger but try to post the journal entry in primary uh, ledger and the system throwed an error message saying the second ledger period is not open then he went in open the second ledger period and then again data posting and that's where the posting was successful similarly for the create accounting program also it will throw an error message when you are running a create accounting in the sub ledger saying that the corresponding second ledger period is not open looking at that error message you need to go into the second ledger and open the second ledger and remember uh, one more thing is this second ledger even though you create your second ledger from a data entry perspective you can have an access to do a data entry of second under second ledger only in a gl you do not have uh data entry responsibilities for the second ledger in the sub ledger so you can have something like general ledger super user reliance inr general ledger super, uh, super user reliance inr secondary but you can and from sub ledger's perspective you can have payables reliance inr ledger you cannot have payables reliance inr secondary similarly you cannot have you can have receivables inr ledger you cannot have receivables inr secondary secondary ledger will not have data entry view for the sub ledgers okay. so, so then from the, a sub ledger perspective the, always the data entry happens in the um, from a view front end view perspective users will be always be doing a data entry directly in the primary ledger and the create accounting program will push the data into gl primary and gl secondary and then once the come data comes into gl secondary then you can massage the data as i said that in gl secondary you can enter the you can do a data entry but it will be only with the source of manual or spreadsheet you cannot get the data from the yeah, i mean you cannot uh, do any kind of massaging of the data uh, directly in the sub ledger secondary yes yeah, somebody was asking some question no i was asking uh, so this is something uh, similar to our uh, um, the translation ledgers right uh, kind of but not right. exactly no no if the yeah. translation in the case of translated ledger okay it is only just converting everything it is not even allowing to do any data entry whether gl or sub ledger hmm. okay and also you use the translated ledger in a scenarios wherein i mean like translated ledger is simply converting the data in the primary ledger into just a reporting currency it will use the same sub ledger, sub -ledger accounting method same currency same calendar but whereas in the sec secondary ledger you can you have an option to use a different chart of accounts you have an option to use different calendar you have an option to use different sub ledger accounting method and you have an option to pass adjustment entries in gl directly okay got it yeah okay so i have seen some clients wherein like uh, take an example uh, they do not have any kind of say consolidation ledger okay 
they have just uh, have only say one say two primary lectures one is usd ledger and one is the inr ledger okay you need not have all the second ledgers you need not have all this consolidation ledger so you can just have simply one reporting ledger wherein everything get converted from inr ledger to usd everything is following the uh, corporate uh, what you call uh, calendar it could be something like uh, a company where 95 percent of its operations are in us only five percent of operations is in india maybe it could be a sales office and some kind of equipment where there is no kind of a legal real legal requirement uh, to go for a uh, what you call uh, different uh, secondary ledger or different uh, chart of accounts or different calendar you can just use a reporting ledger get the data and then if if there is really any kind of a real legal requirement then you can just massage the data in a kind of an excel sheet and give a report to your uh, maybe local authorities that is just like an example okay so you need to from a reporting perspective what is required you need to identify and based on that you need to go for a reporting ledger or secondary ledger or both so in our current client we have gone for both reporting ledger as far as the second ledger reporting ledger is used only from a uh, consolidation uh, it is used only for uh, pushing the data into consolidation ledger and second ledger is used to manage the local reporting okay Hey, uh, Arvind, one question. Uh, when you say uh, those three scenarios, right? I mean, uh, direct GL push to uh, primary, uh, uh, and uh, automatically the posting program will push that general to secondary ledger. Mm -hmm. Same way for legacy and uh, for sub ledger to GL primary will be done through create accounting. Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly, both this uh, posting program uh, and create accounting program uh, has an option of uh, selecting the flag as uh, post this general, mm -hmm. right? Create accounting basically. Create mm -hmm. accounting program has posting yes or no, you need yeah. to select while you're submitting that submit request, right? Uh huh. So uh, uh, let's say um, whether uh, user mistakenly uh, selected a posting flag as yes when he is pushing the subledger uh, journal to GL to mm -hmm. primary, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And journal got created in primary and it posted. Since it is posted and since this primary ledger has a secondary, mm -hmm. the same transaction is created in uh, secondary with posting status or with unposted status it will be posting as you have said post to gl as yes it will do an automatic mm -hmm. posting in both primary as well as the secondary okay so yeah that's where my point if 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 we if the transaction is posted already uh, then you need to reverse it and then adjust that journal in secondary and then report to the no, authorities no, 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 no. or do we have any other option no 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 why do you want to do that like just remember one thing from a create accounting perspective okay when you run your create accounting program there is an option called transfer to gl and post in gl okay obviously you need to say transfer to gl as yes okay so when you run your create accounting with a transfer to gl as yes an entry will get created in the primary ledger as well as the second ledger and the next parameter post in gl if you say post in gl as yes that will be posted in primary as well as secondary if you say post in gl as no unposted entry will get created in both primary and secondary it will not be posted remember whether you post or unpost uh, that uh, post in gl profile uh, the option whether you say yes or no in when you are running your create accounting it will not have any impact in the secondary ledger you, what you are thinking is like you run in a uh, post in GL as no, and the system will create an entry in primary and secondary. And once you post this primary uh, entry in primary ledger, again it is going to recreate in the second ledger. No. From a create accounting perspective, or from the sub ledger perspective, once the data is pushed from primary to secondary, uh, for, for both primary and secondary in parallel, okay, as the source is payables or receivables, now in the primary ledger, whether you post or uh, whether you post it or not, system will not again recreate the same entry in the second ledger. No, no, I understand. I mean, no, I chosen as posting yes only when I'm pushing that general first time to the primary ledger itself in the first stage. Uh -huh. Okay. Let's say from AP, I am pushing one, one general to uh, primary very first time. 
Okay. And uh, during that time itself, I chosen both transfer to GL and posting flag to yes in that create accounting submit request. Okay. Okay. And uh, it is successfully created in GL primary with the posted status and also in the secondary ledger posted status. Okay. But I know for this particular uh, journal, I have to do some changes in the secondary ledger in order to satisfy the legal authority of that local department, okay. sorry, local country. Okay. Since the journal is already posted, mm -hmm. uh, how can I do these uh, changes to the journal in secondary? Okay. Taking this example, say take an example. Uh, in the primary ledger, the entry is 01, department 00. So salary is say 5800, sub account, company code, whatever it is. Debit, $1000, okay. And uh, this is a cash account, maybe 4810. Credit, $1000. So this is the entry in primary ledger. The same entry got pushed into second ledger, okay. And here we are using the same chart of accounts. Okay, the same thing gets pushed into the second ledger. Okay, and it is posted in primary and secondary. Okay, now you want to move this uh, balance of thousand dollars of five eight zero zero, which is a salary account, and you want to divide that into salary domestic and salary international. Okay, salary domestic is five eight zero one, and salary international is five eight zero two. These are the codes, or account code, salary domestic, and salary international so what you do is you do not reverse this entry you pass an adjustment entry wherein you will credit this entry with thousand dollars that is you are moving that uh, balance out of uh, uh, salary account and move you pass an another in uh, what you call other line will be 5801 debit Say six hundred dollars. Okay, so you are going to pass this entry. So the net impact of this particular entry when you run your financial statement would be under five eight zero zero. There is a credit of thousand dollars, debit of one thousand. So that means the balance under five eight zero zero is zero. There is no balance. So when you run your financial statement, you should be able to see balance of six hundred under five eight zero one account, four hundred under five eight zero two account. Okay. So you do not reverse this. You need to pass an adjustment entry so that you will have a opposite impact of that particular entry. So there's a debit of thousand dollars. You credit that. Did you understand? Okay, got it. Okay. Yeah, I got it. But the point is, this activity would be as a manual activity in the secondary ledger. Exactly. Right? This is a manual entry in the say uh, in the second ledger. Yes. Okay. Do we have any automated options for this kind of scenario? And if yes, what is the possibility? Okay, so there is a topic called. I mean, this is again uh, uh, the adjustment could be any kind of an adjustment. Okay, this is one adjustment, and there is also a topic called uh, mass allocations. Uh, okay. Okay. So if you use the mass allocations, mass allocation functionality in the mass allocation, you can write some kind of a simple formulas wherein you can say that if there is a balance under my salary account of five zero zero, okay. Pass say uh, in a month, say uh, transfer 60% to 5801 account, 40% to 5802 account. Okay, in a month. And next month, the percentage changes, you go to, you need to go to the mass allocation formula, again change the percentage, something like that. Or if the percentage is fixed, you can always uh, run that mass allocation, you can create that mass allocation batch once, and every month you can run that particular mass allocation batch program. I mean, we'll get into the details when I, when I speak about that uh, mass allocation functionality, wherein system will do an automatic allocation or moving of the balances from this salary account to this other account so that is the name itself says mass allocation and a mass way do an allocation okay okay got it okay so using i mean this action this particular uh, uh, concept will be automated via mass allocation that's the answer right Yes, you can you can create that mass allocation template in the secondary ledger and at the end of the month you run that mass allocation process or mass allocation program which will move the balances from this account to these accounts. Okay. Okay. So that is one example mass allocation can be used for any other reasons. Uh, there are a lot of other business reasons also. This is also one scenario. Okay. 
okay now okay. getting back to our reliance group structure so now we here we got three ledgers reliance inr ledger reliance usd ledger reliance canada ledger uh, what i will do is i will create the secondary ledger under reliance inr okay uh, if i create a second ledger reliance inr i will be using the same chart of account segment i will be using the same functional currency just i want to uh, just for our demonstration purpose i will use a different calendar okay instead of april to march i will use a jan to december and uh, you, uh, the one of the business reason you, which you can think of for that particular scenario is reliance is a company which is located in india but it has got a businesses in uh, us as well as canada okay so generally and uh, reliance has got is uh, reliance usd has got a company reliance telecom and reliance oil, oil and gas which are registered in us and these companies are say assume that these companies are registered with the uh, nasdaq nasdaq is the stock exchange within us and uh, all the stock exchanges in india uh, sorry in us are governed by something called sec security exchange commission which is equivalent to sep in india security exchange board of india so uh, so there could be one business require uh, reporting requirement for sec from security exchange commission saying that you convert all my even though you are registered in us for reliance telecom and reliance oil and gas for, for from all of your global operations i want to see how your company is doing in other countries also in order to understand uh, what you call the stability of the reliance company in us so reliance sorry the security exchange commission can say that show me your books of accounts of reliance inr ledger matching my us gap requirement so what i can do is i can create a secondary ledger in reliance inr okay with the functional currency of inr calendar of jan to december instead of april to march okay and then chart of accounts is same and sub ledger accounting method is also same okay just only calendar is different and at the end of the month once the data is pushed into reliance second ledger i do some massaging of the data based on the reporting requirement and then run a translation process and then again pull the data from reliance inr secondary ledger which is with a with a functional currency of inr i will translate into usd that is one scenario other scenario would be reliance inr secondary ledger with the chart of account same calendar different functional currency directly usd so various scenarios so for my uh, what do you call uh, demonstration purpose i will be creating a reliance secondary ledger with same chart of account different calendar same functional currency okay there is no hard and fast rule it all depends on the business requirement okay reliance secondary ledger so in order to create the second ledger first what you need to do is you need to go to the accounting setup manager first pull up your secondary ledger reliance inr ledger click on update accounting options and then see there is something called add secondary ledger this is where you can create the second ledger you cannot directly create a secondary ledger it is not possible to create a stand alone secondary ledger second ledger is always linked to the primary ledger okay so as you are clicking on add secondary ledger so the word itself says add second ledger you are adding the second ledger to the primary ledger so there is already inbuilt link between this primary ledger and the second ledger what we will be creating okay click on add second ledger what is this uh, information please note that the sub ledger accounting will fail to create accounting for transaction reversal and accounting entry derived using business for the sub ledger level second ledger is added to primary that has finally accounted use sub ledger accounting okay that is fine so what this particular program is saying is you have already started using your primary ledger you have entered some data entry and then you are after a couple of months or after after a couple of days you are adding a secondary ledger so that means all the entries whatever is there in the existing primary ledger as of now will not get pushed into second ledger you need to use some you need to run some program called sla secondary alc historic update program we are not doing a data conversion we are not getting into those things okay now if i do a data uh, now if i create a secondary ledger without running of these programs now all the entries which will be created from now onwards 
will get pushed into secondary ledger okay whatever the day entries which are already created in the primary ledger as of now will not get pushed into second ledger you need to either run this particular program or or do a balance upload directly in the second ledger for the existing data okay this is not a real client environment i will not get into those, those data conversion activities but it is good that it is showing this uh, kind of a message uh, our current client is in 12.2.4 we were not getting this message i think they have improved that in the current version 12.2.6 okay reliance india secondary ledger that's the name let me close all other extra okay reliance secondary ledger and what is my chart of accounts i want to use the same chart of accounts and what is the calendar i want to use the accounting calendar accounting calendar is nothing but your jan to december uh, for uh, for your primary ledger if you remember the accounting calendar is uh, reliance calendar okay where the periods are april to march there are various accounting calendar we want to go with an accounting calendar of month and i want to use the functional currency of inr and i want to use the same sub ledger accounting method which is used in primary which is standard accrual okay so if you observe chart of account currency sub ledger accounting method all these three c's are same only sub ledger uh, accounting calendar is different okay and there are different data conversion levels balance journal sub ledger adjustments only so we are going with the data conversion this is what i was explaining earlier so we we uh, will be going with the data conversion level of sub ledger if you go with the data conversion level of balance or journal then what will happen is whether it's a whether it's a direct entries directly in gl or whether the entries are coming from the sub ledger only once the data goes to your uh, primary ledger once you post that then only the data the data will be pushed into your second ledger if you go with an option of journals okay so when you say journal it is something like data conversion at a gl level okay whether you enter the data in your gl whether, whether you enter the data in your primary ledger or whether you are getting the data from your external uh, system as soon as the data is there in your second primary ledger gl and once you post then only it will go into your secondary ledger if you go with if you go with the balances option then you are not what do you call you are not uh, pushing the data line by line you are just pushing only the balances if there are say 100 lines in the primary ledger you are not going line by line you are going by just a balances level okay that at a code combination level what is the balance only that will get that will get pushed into your second ledger and adjustments only uh, i have never used this uh, as far as i know this adjustment only functionality is used only if you want to use some kind of an adjustments directly in the second ledger but to be frank i never used that so we'll not get even get into that so most of the clients whatever i have seen is they will go for the sub ledger data conversion level of sub ledger again it is very important you need to show all the three options in a testing environment in any implementation project uh, you need to look into all these three options show the data how the data looks like to the user and once the user is comfortable and once we think over different scenarios then only we need to go for this option the best option would be to go for sub ledger level more or less if you go with the sub ledger level it will cover almost all the scenarios so even we have uh, did a testing on balance level journal level sub ledger level and we have given a poc uh, to the user on these three levels and ultimately user agreed for the sub ledger level because that actually caters to most of the business scenarios and once you as you know that uh, any of these c's cannot be changed once you uh, click on apply even the data conversion level is also not possible to change so you should be careful when you are deciding that so if you let us assume if you go with the uh, data conversion level of uh, journal you click on apply you complete the setups you do a data entry and after a while you realize that no no, no uh, my data conversion level is not meeting uh, data conversion level of journal is not meeting my business requirement i i should have actually gone for sub ledger if that is what you decide the only option le left for you would be to disable this second ledger create a new second ledger one primary ledger can have any number of secondary ledgers 
one thing uh, what is the when you say when you choose the conversion level as a general right mm -hmm. uh, you said that transaction flow to primary and uh, uh, and once that primary transaction is posted then only it will move to secondary is that mm -hmm. correct yeah so coming back to this if you are going with the subledger uh, this is the if you are going with the subledger level conversion this is how it happens okay if you are going for the general level okay one sec uh, let me copy it here if you are going for say general level Whether it's a direct GL manual entry or legacy system into direct GL or subledger, only once the general entry is posted in primary ledger, it gets into second ledger. Okay. What is the difference? I didn't get, uh, Arvin. Because even whether it is a create accounting, okay, create accounting itself, you are when you are the, for the third option, right? Subledger to GL. Yeah, this create accounting is nothing but you are selecting posting option to yes in that program, which internally calls another program, which is called posting, post the general option, right? Mm -hmm. So it anyway, when you trigger that, when you say I want to post this transaction, mm -hmm. whenever you see this instruction, whether it can be create accounting or it can be some other uh, option or other uh, other request or something it will simply post both for primary and secondary okay, okay so at a high, yeah so at a high level whether you go for a general level or subledger level it is more or less same because even in the subledger uh, uh, what do you call uh, whether the general level or subledger level you are ensuring that all the entries whatever is there in the primary ledger are going into the second ledger but it's only just a timing perspective okay if you are going for the general level okay it gets pushed into second ledger only once the general entry is posted in primary ledger. And if you are going with an option of post to, to GL as yes, so it will be pretty straightforward. Okay. Whereas in the case of subledger level, at the time of create accounting in the secondary ledger, uh, sorry, in the subledger, that's where the data is being pushed into primary ledger and second ledger in parallel. Okay. And also the way the data is being linked in the background, the IDs are also different. We, if you go with the subledger level or general level in the case of subledger level the create accounting program itself is pushing the data in parallel to primary and secondary but whereas in the case of general level create accounting program is pushing the data only to primary ledger okay and then from the primary ledger once it is posted then only it is pushed into second ledger so that there could be a timing issues that you ran create accounting program uh, under general level without post to gls yes okay it is lying in the primary ledger unposted for say two or three days Okay, at that particular stage, if you look at that, that particular entry is still not there in the second ledger. Okay, mm -hmm. but whereas if you go for the sub ledger level, as soon as you run your create accounting, the data is there in both primary and second ledger, whether you post in primary ledger or not. Okay, but at a high level, yeah, but okay. high level, yes, both the data, I mean, whether it's a direct entry entries or legacy system entries or sub ledger entries, all the three kind of any scenarios will be there both in uh, what you call. Uh, general level or subledger level data conversion options under second ledger but but there is no functional gap between these two options when i decide for what uh, conversion level i am choosing for that secondary ledger i mean if i mean what i mean to say is if i am if, if a business user is, is 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 not bothered about the timing mm -hmm. uh, i can as good as select a general also in my secondary ledger setup for the conversion level right yes yes because these three scenarios are anyway covered in both these two options yes yes yes, yes. okay thank you okay so going back to our setup so i think i got an error message it says that value reliance second ledger exceeds the maximum value allowed var care 30. so looks like the name cannot exceed more than 30 characters so what i will do is reliance uh, INR secondary. Okay, so that's the name which we will use. It should not exceed 30 characters. Okay. Click on apply. 
see these are the weird uh, issues in the forms cancel retry this once again it says too many objects or something like that so for these kind of weird uh, issues close the form requery try once again okay so reliance secondary chart of accounts is uh, reliance accounting currency is inr subledger accounting method is standard accrual subledger okay see it saved okay now we will complete the ledger options so now i think as we have already seen uh, uh, what call uh, all the prominent fields when i am defining the primary ledger now i will not get into explaining each and every field i'll just uh, follow my br100 and complete the setup so my this is my first open period would be i want to start using this from september 17 member of future enter prepared one subledger accounting method is this one and then next retained earnings account this is my retained earnings account enable intra company enable uh, general approval is fine reversal criteria for the time being we can leave it uh, if you want to run translation this would be corporate rate period average rate and accumulated translation adjustment account thing is fine okay as i if you remember i mentioned that there is a bug in this particular form even though we have entered the retained earnings account first time when you enter the retained earnings account come to the last screen it will throw in a message please enter a retained earnings account you have to go back to this go back re enter the retained earnings account this is an issue in 12.2.4 which i had observed looks like the oracle has not even fixed that even in 12.2.6 but again as this what you call ledger setup is just a kind of a one time activity i did not raise an oracle sr to get this fixed otherwise i would have actually raised an sr to get a patch for this this is actually a bug in the form which they should actually fix this i i i i assume like most of the users would have even ignored that error message and because this is only one time activity once in a while you actually create a ledger the only extra step what you are doing is you are going back re entering and then going clicking on next and then completing that okay okay and the other, other important thing is primary to secondary ledger mapping if you remember you did you did not have this particular option primary to secondary ledger mapping when we were defining the uh when we are con configuring the primary ledger this particular extra uh, configuration step is applicable only for the secondary ledger okay don't do anything just click on complete so there is an option here like if you observe uh, post generates automatically from the source ledger so what will happen is if i say yes especially for, especially for these two entries whenever the general entry is posted as i said that like uh, whenever the general entry is posted an entry will get created in the second ledger but it, it will be in unposted status okay but if you ch check this post generals automatically from source general as yes 
that means whenever the general entry is posted in the primary ledger automatically an entry gets created in the second ledger and it will be automatically posted also okay so that is the significance of this post generals automatically from the source ledger again this is a one of the production support issue users can say that i posted a general entries in primary ledger why that is not getting posted in the second ledger so one of if then you need to check this option as yes if it, if it is still no then somebody needs to go into the second ledger and manually needs to post those general entries or run the program automatic posting program okay and uh, reporting currencies for the time being just click on complete we will not be assigning any reporting currency if you remember reporting currencies will be automatically created by the system when you run your translation program okay balancing segment value assignments oh, these are all practical difficulties see when you you have encountered an unexpected errors please contact your system administrator for assistance so the only option left is if you get these kind of errors again close the form reopen so whatever we have entered whatever is got saved will be available reliance secondary ledger this is primary this is secondary okay so if you observe here there is no concept of assigning of the legal entities to the second ledger legal entities are already assigned to a primary ledger whatever the legal entities which are assigned to the primary ledger you should you should be able to use the same legal entities or company codes even under the secondary ledger also unless until if you got some other business requirement to add, to use extra company codes so in this example 0102 are assigned here under primary ledger the same 0102 you can even use in the second ledger also but if you want to use some other extra company code say 011 or 012 directly in the second ledger then you need to go to this balancing segment value assignment click on update and click on add balancing segment value and assign that okay and uh, we will not get into this inter company intra company rules just click on done because i had already explained that so you can see a tick mark against each of the steps so that means this completes the secondary ledger setup